Richland. Let's get into it. On the heels of the milkweed seed cold stratification experiment, here comes the milkweed seed scarification experiment. But what is scarification of seeds, you ask? I'm glad that you did. Well, scarification, in terms of seeds, it really means that the outer parts of the seed are going to be damaged in such a way that it allows water to access parts of the seed that previously were not accessed by water. Scarification is essentially the weathering of the seed casing. It's the normal wear and tear that a seed would experience if it's just living its life on or slightly in the ground. Whether that be from animals stepping on it, roots causing different pressure and grains of, of dirt pushing into the seed, whatever it may be, that's scarification. But keep in mind, this is a good kind of damage. See, scarification, when it happens naturally, it's kind of a way of letting the seed know it's time to chemically turn on and start to do a growing process. And certain seeds have these protective layers to their coating in order to resist growing too early. We don't want a seed that just fell in the fall to start to sprout about three days before the first fatal frost. And so if we artificially cause scarification, in theory what this is doing, especially with something like the milkweed seeds, Asclepias syriaca, that's what I'm using today. If we are able to break those casings and give some wear and tear, in theory, that should allow the water to get to them a little bit sooner and start the germination process a little bit earlier. Does that really happen? I don't know. That's why we're going to test it out. But of course, keeping in mind with the recent cold stratification experiment, just because, you know, the logic and the even the scientific evidence is there to show that something might have an effect over large numbers, if we're talking about thousands of milkweed seeds, yeah, there might be an effect there that's significant. If we're talking about somebody with like 50 or fewer seeds, is that effect significant enough to really matter to us? Well, that's what we're going to investigate. I have some control seeds. These were collected from the same stalk of milkweed in fall of 2019. They have been kept at room temperature indoors ever since then. So these have not been cold stratified by nature or by humans. And then I've got some seeds left from what was cold stratified for 28 days by myself personally by placing them in the freezer, all from the same milkweed stock. I'm going to have six groups then in my experiment. Groups one and two will be the control groups, one cold stratified and one not. Then I'm going to have two more groups, group three and four. Group three will not be cold stratified, but it's going to be scarified. We're going to put it through a process of scarification using a dirt and bag method. And then group four is going to be the same thing, scarified with dirt and bag method, but it will have been cold stratified. And then groups five and six. Another way to try some scarification is using a thumbtack method to just scratch the casing of the, of the seed. And so I'm going to have a not cold stratified group of that, group five, and a cold stratified group of that, group six, where they will have been scarified using the thumbtack method. And I'll be showing you these techniques, of course. And bonus, I'm also going to show you a different new way to germinate that I've been kind of beta testing with this. So, all right, let's dive into the techniques of some scarification and do what this chem teacher would say is the pre-lab. Let's get ready for the experiment. 20 not cold stratified control seeds. And now cold stratified seeds. Not picking out the pretty ones. Just whatever comes out. Two more. Okay, in they go. Aww. Okay, groups one and two. Not scarified. This one's not cold stratified, this one is. These two, not cold stratified and cold stratified, these are going to receive our bag in dirt method of scarification. These two here, cold stratified, not cold stratified, these two are going to receive the thumbtack method. All of these here are cold stratified. All of these here in the top row are not. Let's show you the bag and dirt technique. Now here is a bag of dirt. Not too big of a deal if it has other debris, little pebbles, rocks, because hey, this is just a little bag of nature. So I'm going to open up our bag here and start with the not cold stratified 20 seeds. I'm going to place them in here. You can seal it. You don't have to. But the idea is you're going to rough these guys up. Now some people, what they like to do is seal it up and then just shake a lot. How violently you shake, that's up to you. But also pushing on it just a little bit, I mean that's really the point of this is to damage a bit that seed casing. So I'm not being too, 
too severe in my pressure here. Just kind of tossing it around a little bit. Spending about 60 seconds doing it. About 60 seconds. And now, of course, time to retrieve the seeds. Come here, you little buggers. Yeah. Number 20. Got them back. Okay. Put them back in uh, their container for the experiment. Now, time to do the 20 that were cold stratified. And, of course, I want to do essentially the same exact things for about the same amount of time as I did to our non-cold stratified group. Working with it for about 60 seconds. All right. There we go. Number 20. Back into their cup of cold stratification they go. Next up, the thumbtack method. Okay, so here's our non-cold stratified thumbtack scarification seeds. Now the goal here, again, is to make a scratch. I'm just going to do it lengthwise here. It's kind of delicate work to do. Hold it with my finger and just kind of scratch in the same direction. Try to build a little bit of a groove. Once it's got a groove, do a little scratching. I'm just trying to scratch away a little bit of that brown coat. And if I'm getting to some white stuff, well, that's the actual seed material inside that has to grow, and so I don't want to damage that too much. But again, a little bit of damage is actually, as far as I understand, a good thing for this. We're going to find out. And I flip it over to the other side, and I'm just going to do the same up and down, just holding it with a finger, I suppose, uh, you know, some other little tool, handy tool, could hold the seed for you. And just already doing this one, and some of the others I've beta tested with, yeah, it's a lot of work. If some of these side parts, like, break away, I'm not worried about that. Again, we are intentionally roughing up this seed. Now, could I have scratched this up a whole lot more? Certainly. Uh, I'm sure that there's, there's a point of too much. So that's why I'm just going to be conservative here with this experiment and just do a couple scratches on each side and call it good. See if we get results from this. And now I'm going to do that to uh, 19 more of these non-cold stratified seeds. And then I'm also going to do it to 20 of the cold stratified seeds. So i got some scratching to do. Okay, 20. Not cold stratified. And that took uh, eh, about 10 minutes. Whew, okay. And now I have done the uh, thumbtack method to the other 20, the cold stratified 20, and that's a lot of work. So I hope we do get some significant results here, otherwise I don't know if this is worth the effort. But hey, that's why it's an experiment, we shall see. Alright, it's all set up. We're ready to germinate now. And what's this new germination method that I'm dropping on you? Well, it's just soaking the seeds. This is actually rattling around in my brain a little bit ago. You know, I like the germination method that I've done for years, but I kept thinking about it. Why do I need that container with the paper towel for the seeds? Isn't it just essentially letting them soak? And of course, I looked and, uh, yep, I'm late to the game. Plenty of people have been doing this for years. So, it's what I've been playing around with. I've enjoyed it a lot. I'm just going to uh, pour the water and let these guys soak. But yes, this germination method has worked out for me pretty well with some beta testing that I did and was able to sprout just fine. Now, once they start uh, sprouting, then I'm going to transfer them to some mild, gentle soil so they can continue to burst out of that seed, uh, not floating around with the others. When they do that, uh, I'm going to be then marking that daily data, and we're going to just see, does this cause any of the seeds to sprout sooner than any of the others? But we're going to go ahead and jump to whenever some of these guys start to sprout to show you some of the first results. Alright, today is July 22nd, which means we're on day 5 of the experiment. And uh, not only had I planned on any way changing the water, but turns out there's some data to actually take today. So cool, already five days in, we got some things sprouting. Let's take a look. Pour them out. Just gonna give it a quick wipe out. That way if there's any other plant life and mold or ew, well bacteria in there, just wiping it out. And again, when it comes to sanitation, um, these are seeds, they're, they're pretty hardy. So I'm not worried about like disinfecting this and giving it a thorough cleaning. We're going to do just fine here. All right, so let's see what we got as far as any sprouters. Ooh, you see that guy? Yeah. That little buddy sprouting legs right there. Only one that sprouted in this group, but sprouted nonetheless. Okay, they're all back in there in our control, not cold stratified group. Ready for some more water. 
Good to go. Here's how I'm taking the data. And as you can see uh, across the board, this is all pretty boring until today. But we have had one from group number one sprout. And that's for a total of one as of today. Okay, on to group two. Looks like we got this guy here sprouting. Turns out there's another one sprouted here in the cold stratification control group. So that's actually two out of the 20. Group three. These are the ones that have not been cold stratified and received the sand scarification. There's our four sprouters in group number three. Four. For a total of four. Now here's why you can't draw conclusions based upon limited information. Here we have the cold stratified and sand scarified group. Uh, we have just one sprout here. Okay, now we get to the thumbtack scarification. I do see at least one of them. Here's our little first little sprouter right there. Just barely, but enough to call it. Yeah, I think that's the only one from this group that seems to have sprouted. Now, group six. Okay, I looked and looked. I don't see any sprouting in this group. All right. Check back with you in a little bit when there's something else to report. Checking in July 26th, day 9 of the experiment. Yesterday and today, seems like there's, there's plenty of action happening on. Let's check it out. You can see here's where I've been putting the ones that have sprouted. And it's just about time to get some of these guys out of here and into some soil. But as far as new ones being added to this one today, we got two new ones here in group 1. Group 2's got one. Group 3's only got one, but, you know, this one's had the most action. Group 4? We're looking at at least four for Group 4. Group 5 and 6. I think I'm already willing to call it. I wouldn't use a thumbtack method. These, these seeds are looking pretty destroyed, pretty haggard. And also something I'm noticing, it's really tough to see on camera, but, like, the, the water's cloudier in these two thumbtack groups. So I think, like, really it's just damaging the seed and allowing mold to get to it and not getting too many results. However, however, we do have one that made it through my thumbtack brutalization. This guy's sprouting right here. I'm definitely liking this style of germination a bit better. And since these have been kept outdoors the whole time, I think that that maybe just leads to you know, being outdoors in July, warm months. I think that leads to further evidence that comparing this to last experiment temperature is going to be playing a huge role in how fast these guys germinate. Okay, check back later. Alright, it's August 6th. Last time there was any action, it was August 1st. And if I'm putting this in the final edit, then things stayed that way. Let's see some data. We'll start with group 1. This was a pure control, non-cold stratified, not scarified group of 20 seeds. And of those 20 seeds, 10 sprouted. And from the graph, we can also see that the very first seed to sprout sprouted on day five of the experiment. Now, obviously, this video is meant to be about scarification of seeds, but just to point out again, here's some seeds that they were not cold stratified, they were not scarified, and they were able to sprout some five days into soaking into water, some six, seven, eight, nine. So do you need to cold stratify? No, you don't. Okay, but just one graph doesn't give us a whole lot of context yet. Let's bring in a second one. Here's group two. Now, comparing group 1 and group 2's data together, obviously nothing was scarified here, but it's just another chance to take a look at cold stratification versus not. Not a real significant difference there. Okay, let's keep going. Now, if we take these two groups, group 1 and 2, and we combine their data into one graph, we can just say, hey, we're ignoring whether it was cold stratified or not. Here's 40 seeds and what they did as far as which one sprouted on which days. Here is the control for our scarification experiment. Here's 40 seeds that were not scarified. Pin that graph, pin that thought for a second. Now we're gonna skip a little bit. Let's look at groups five and six, and let's go ahead and do that at the same time. Here's their miserable looking graphs. These were the groups that were given the scarification treatment using a thumbtack. Do not do this. Of the 40 seeds that were given the thumbtack treatment, five sprouted. And I think that they are troopers for doing it. I think that these were probably the, the five that I least butchered. Seeds in this experiment with the, the thumbtack scarification, they were looking pretty haggard as the days went on. So hey, it's still a successful experiment. I learned something that, yeah, we shouldn't do. 
But here's a great example of just because it, somebody says it in a blog and the pictures look nice doesn't mean it's true, effective, or reliable. But again, it could just be that I butchered them too much. All right, now here's where I think the data gets a bit interesting. Here is groups three and four. These two groups receive the same sandbag scarification. And to be honest, while doing that technique, I was a little bit worried that I was being too gentle. And it's interesting because, yeah, it looks like there's a significant difference worth bringing up. But a difference of what and how much? Let's take a look. Here's again, group one and two. Here's their data lumped together into one graph. Here's our control, non-scarified. And now here's a graph of groups three and four's data combined. These 40 seeds were all sand scarified. Now already you can see, yep, definitely a difference here. It's a slight difference, but it's still significant and it's worth pointing out and worth talking about. The data does seem to show that if you do scarification, at least in this way, no thumbtacks, but with sand in a bag and similar to how I did it, the data does seem to point to two things. Number one, seeds sprouting a little bit earlier. For the control groups one and two, those 40 seeds that were uh, not scarified, after nine days, 11 of them had sprouted. In that same amount of time for the sand scarified groups three and four, 18 of those seeds had sprouted. That's seven more than if you hadn't scarified. When you're dealing with 40 seeds, seven out of the 40, eh, that's a significant difference. So I think while, yes, there could be a chance that maybe this is just some randomness in there, I, I doubt it. It's doing what we would expect from scarification, from what other sources have told us it's likely to do, that it causes some seeds to be able to get access to that water a little bit earlier and thus sprout a little bit earlier. The second thing that it seems to be pointing to, and this one, this is a conclusion I would say is a lot less firm, is that it does seem to be that more seeds did sprout. We got 19 seeds compared to 24 of them actually sprouting of the 40 and 40. 19 versus 24, it's worth bringing up. It's, it's a difference. But also, let's just keep it in perspective. It does seem to be that you would have a higher sprout success rate, but this is still only 40 seeds for each group. And when the difference is only five seeds, let's just also remember, if our control group had sprouted two more, and our experimental groups had sprouted two less, we wouldn't even really be talking about it as a difference at all. But it's still encouraging. So what did we get out of this? Let's sum it up. Do you need to do scarification to your seeds? No, you don't need to. And also, I don't think you need to do any cold stratification. But that's because we're using the word need. Is there some benefit to scarification of the seeds? Provided you're not jabbing at it in a murderous way with a thumbtack, if you're doing sand scarification, there does seem to be some benefit of some earlier sprouting seeds, and a little bit of evidence of maybe even a higher sprouting success rate. So if you like, give it a shot. See what kind of results you come up with. And as always, the real proof is in the pudding. How does it work when you try it? Do you get results? I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for exploring this experiment with me. And I hope you're planting lots of milkweed. Keep it up. See you next time.